So, dear brothers uh, and sisters, uh, uh, last uh, week uh, we studied about the Lord's uh, second coming. Where we studied what is the purpose of the Lord's second coming. And uh, you see some of the contrary verses which says that the Lord will come like a thief. Well, other verse uh, tells that he come with a blow of a trumpet. How can a thief come with a blow of a trumpet? Other verses say that every eye shall see him. But Jesus clearly said that uh, the world shall see me no more. Now, how do we harmonize these verses, if you see? So, to understand uh, these verses, uh, we need to first of all understand how Jesus came, how Jesus died, how Jesus was resurrected, how he is now and how he will uh, come again. So, these things are very, very important to understand the manner of our Lord's uh, second coming. Therefore, you see... <clears throat> Jesus, actually, uh, when uh, he was uh, created, he was created with the Father, uh, uh, along with him, you see, was called as the uh, Logos, the Word of God, and he existed as the first uh, creation of God. So, we have seen this one very elaborately in the subject of Trinity. When Jesus was called uh, as uh, Michael, the Michael means the chiefest of uh, the angel. So, uh, and the rest of all the creations were created by uh, God through Jesus. So, that was the first birth of Jesus. Then, when Jesus came to this earth, he was born in Mother Mary's womb as, uh, you see, the Son of God, as Emmanuel, as Jesus. So, that was his birth in the flesh. But that life, Jesus sacrificed it on the cross after 33 and a half years. So, why did Jesus die on the cross? We all know very well. It was Adam's sin that Jesus had to redeem. So, Jesus had to take the place of Adam and redeem the entire mankind. So, hence Jesus died on the cross. So, Jesus sacrificed his life, you see, his body, his flesh as a ransom for Adam. Uh, let us read John 6.51. Uh, Romans sister, can you read John 6.51? Yes. I can yeah. read I am the living bread which came I... down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Very good. Sir. See, Jesus said, I am the living bread. I came from heaven. You see, and any, if any man eat this bread, he shall never die. He shall live forever. And the flesh which I give for the world, is uh, the bread which I give for the world uh, is my flesh. So that uh, Jesus gave. See, clearly underlined, Jesus says this body, this flesh of Jesus, that one he gave for the whole world. We all know very well, you see, through the body of Jesus, through his sacrifice on the death of the cross, we have got access to God's uh, throne. We have access to heaven. Let us read a few more verses. Hebrews 10 10. Uh, Joy Brother, can you read Hebrews 10 10? Okay, brother. Hebrews 10 10. By the which will we were sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus, Jesus Christ once for all. Uh, see, the offering of the body of Jesus once for all. So, Jesus offered his body once for all. Okay. Now, read verse 19 and 20 also. Brother. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by, by a new and living, our, living way which he had, consecrated for us through the veil 
that is to say his flesh ah you see we have access to the heaven the throne of god and how we did get the access it is through the flesh of jesus that means jesus sacrifice of his flesh was very very important to bring mankind to god okay now jesus gave his body for what reason you see in isaiah 53rd chapter it clearly says jesus took all our penalty and all our sins were laid upon jesus let us read isaiah 53 10 and 12 brother Ah, uh, okay. Gopal brother, can you read? Isaiah fifty three ten and twelve. Okay, brother. And he made his grave with the wicked, ah, uh, wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither were was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed; he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. See, he has poured out his soul unto death. He has poured out his soul as an offering to God. So this clearly proves that Jesus' body was offered as a sacrifice on Lord's altar. You see, to satisfy God's justice, to redeem the mankind. Okay, now how was Jesus resurrected? If this body of Jesus was sacrificed for the entire mankind, you see, to redeem mankind, then how was Jesus resurrected? The Bible says that Jesus was resurrected in a spiritual body. He was never resurrected in the same body which actually he died. You see, Jesus was resurrected. You see, as a spirit body, First uh, Peter three eighteen. Muna sister, can you read First Peter three eighteen? For Christ also had once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death. In in the flesh but quickened by the spirit okay put to death in the flesh underline so his flesh is gone he was put to death but how was jesus resurrected it says jesus was quickened by the spirit in the spirit as a spirit being you see jesus was resurrected now how is jesus now let us read a few verses muna sister please read Hebrews first chapter three and four also sister. Hebrews first chapter three and four. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his portion and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin. Sat down on the right hand of Majesty on high. Very good. Made, ah, please, please. Being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance ob obtained a more excellent name than they. See, here Jesus, after offering his body as sacrifice, sat down on the right hand of God. Now, how is he? is in the express image of the father he is much more excellent you see much more higher than all the angels so jesus is god that higher nature among the angelic nature what jesus is having is a higher angelic nature see there is a difference between angelic nature and uh, the divine nature we have seen the subject in very detail in the three ways you see so angels are created in one level but they are spirit beings only above the angels there are uh, archangels you see there are also spirit beings 
and higher than the archangels is God himself where God is having, you see, a spiritual nature. But uh, what type of spiritual nature, if you see, he is having the divine nature, the nature of immortality. And now Jesus, after proving his faithfulness to God, Jesus is in this divine nature. Now, what is the divine nature? The nature which God himself is having, where his death is no possibility at all. You see, in the brightness, you see, the brightness of his glory, Jesus is sharing. And uh, uh, do we have any example of what it will look like uh, to be of the divine nature? Yes. You see, Apostle Paul, before becoming Paul, when he was Saul, on the way to Damascus, you see, he actually saw Jesus. And how was Jesus? The Bible says that Jesus was much brighter than the sun at the noonday. Uh, let us read Acts 26.13. Acts 26.13. Amar Burdar, can you read Acts 26.13? Acts 26.13. Admittedly, okay, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and then uh, which uh, journey with me. Very good, Buddha. See, our Jesus, uh, he was much brighter than the sun. Imagine in the hot summer day, when you just come outside in the mid-noon, uh, if you just lift up your eyes, uh, can you see the sun? You can't see the sun. Even if you see your eyes will get blinded for a few seconds. Sir. You see, we can't see it clearly, very clearly. This is the brightness. This is the glory which Jesus is now having. And what happened to Apostle Paul? You see, when Jesus saw, you see, showed this vision to Apostle Paul, when Apostle Paul saw Jesus in this nature, what actually happened to Apostle Paul? What happened to his eyes? Do anybody remember? What actually happened to the eyes of Apostle Paul? Yes, he lost his Yes, eyes. sir. He lost his sight. He was blinded. Let us read Acts 9, chapter 7, 9, and 12. Uh, Romy, sister, can you read Acts 7, 9, chapter? Only 7 verse, 9th verse, and 12th verse. Okay, uh, Muna Sutter, can you read Acts 9, chapter 7, 9 and 12? I'm reading, brother. Oh, okay, okay. Please, Romy Sutter, sorry. Thank you. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Hmm. the verse 9 hmm. and he was and he was three days without sight and neither he did eat hmm. or nor drink ah, see he did not receive sight you see he could not eat and drink then what happened verse 12 sister ah. and hath seen in a vision a man named um, Anais coming in and putting his hand on him and he might receive his sight. Very good. See, it was only after Ananias coming and praying to Paul that his, his sight was restored. Imagine this bright glory of Jesus just because one person Saul saw what happened. He was blinded. Hence, this is the glory. This is the speciality of the divine nature. Now, this was the last time that Jesus has ever showed to anybody 
in the divine nature. First Corinthians 15, 8. First Corinthians 15, 8. Joel brother, please read First Corinthians 15, 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one of as as of one born out of due time. See, last of all, that means he is the last person to G, to see Jesus in this divine nature. And how did he see? It says, as one born out of due time. Now, what is the meaning of one born out of due time? You see, there is a time for a child to be born. Now, what is that time? That is called as a due time. That is nine months. But here, Apostle Paul says, I saw Jesus as one born out of due time. Actually. Now, you see, if a child is born before nine months, what do they call the child as? They call the child as a premature child. Some children are born for seven months, you see. They call premature child, no? So that is how Apostle Paul saw Jesus. What is the meaning of this one? The meaning of this one is that we are all now begotten of the Holy Spirit. When can we see Jesus face to face? It is only after our death that we can see Jesus face to face because Jesus is not in the flesh because he is in the spirit being. And we can't see spirit being in our naked eyes until they are revealed. So the only way that we can see them, you see, is uh, only after the resurrection. And that resurrection is our birth in the spirit. But Apostle Paul, even before that birth, in the spirit, that is in the resurrection, while he was in the flesh itself, he saw Jesus. That is the reason he says, one born out of due time. So everybody can see Jesus. You see, the church can see Jesus only when they are on that side of the veil. Let us read 1 John 3, 2. 1 John 3, 2. Uh, sister, can you read 1 John 3, 2? <clears throat> Beloved, now are we the Son of God, and it doth not it appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, he shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, we don't know how we shall be, but we can see Jesus only when. When he is going to return. When we can see him, only when we will be like him in the spirit be. Then only we can see. You see, we shall be like him. And we shall see him as he is. Only then can anybody see the resurrected Lord. Now with Jesus. Jesus is in the immortal nature. Where no man can see. You see, that brightness Jesus is living. First Timothy 6.16 Joel brother, please read First Timothy 6.16. <clears throat> Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. See, underline it. Whom no man has seen, nor can see. That is the, you see, Immortal nature. He is living in such a brightness that uh, no man can approach. No human being can see. You see, God and Jesus in this flesh now, they are living in such immortal nature. That is the, you see, divine being of Jesus now. Okay. And that is the reason Apostle Paul clearly said that uh, in in future, that means now, we don't know Jesus in the flesh. We know him no more in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5.16. Amar brother, can you read 2 Corinthians 5.16? Mm. sixteen. 
Okay. Uh, second Corinthians five sixteen. Oh. Wherefore, hence for know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know he know we him no more. Mm. Though we knew Jesus in the flesh, since now, in the future, we will know Jesus no more in the flesh. Why? That flesh Jesus sacrificed as a, a redemption price for the humankind. So Jesus is not going to come in that body at all. You see, in olden days, they used to sacrifice on the altar. Can that sacrifice be taken away? No. Jesus gave himself a sacrifice. That body was given a sacrifice. Jesus is no more in that human body. Please understand. Jesus is no more in the human body, but he is resurrected as a spiritual body. Hence, Jesus clearly said, the world shall see me no more. You see, the world shall see me no more. No more can the world see Jesus because he is in that divine nature. Okay. Now, <coughs> if Jesus is uh, no more in the flesh, is in a divine nature, then uh, did not Jesus appear to Thomas? Jesus appeared to Thomas in the same flesh, no? How was this possible? Let us read that verse where John chapter 20. Uh, Joel brother, John chapter 20. Verse <laughs> Uh, 24, verse 24 to 29. Okay. But Thomas, one of the, one of the 12 called Didmus, was not with them when Jesus come. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but the, but he said, said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. See? And yeah, permit me that. Yeah. You see, what had happened actually was, Jesus was resurrected. Many disciples have seen it. So when they came and uh, testified this one to Thomas, Thomas did not believe he told clearly, I won't believe any of your words until I put my finger in his wound and see it myself. So what happened? Jesus appeared the same way. You see, and Thomas did see it. Read verse 26-27. Uh, huh? And after eight days again, his disciples were with him and Thomas with him, with them, then come Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the mid midst, and said, Peace by unto you. Then mm. said, Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas mm. answered. Hmm. And said unto him, My Lord and my God. Uh, Jesus see? said, Yeah, what happened was that Jesus appeared to him and said, You see, touch and see me. So, here yeah, Jesus appeared with all the wounds the same way as he died and he showed it to Thomas so that uh, Thomas might believe. Now, why did Jesus, uh, you see, come in the same body. We just now saw from the scriptures that Jesus' body was sacrificed on the altar. He died on the cross. His body is gone. It is like a bread that can never be taken away. It is going for the world. Then how did Jesus here appear in the same flesh, in the same body? You see, we should study actually what had happened there. You see, you see what has happened was there that... Um, before this one, 
Jesus actually appeared to the disciples, but there Thomas was not there. Let us read verse 19. Muna sister, can you read please verse 19? Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Ah, you see, there what had happened was that, you see, the doors were shut, the windows were closed, suddenly Jesus stood in midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And Jesus showed that he was resurrected to the disciples. But what had happened? Thomas was not there in that situation. Verse 24, sister. Una sister, verse 24. But Thomas, one of the two well, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Ah, when Jesus came, Thomas was missing. So everybody went and told Thomas that though Jesus is resurrected, we saw him. Thomas could not believe. Why? Because they were all very discouraged that Jesus has died. They all believed so many things and followed Jesus. And suddenly, this belief was totally shattered. So when somebody came and told something about Jesus, it was not very easy for them to believe. And Thomas clearly put a condition. Until I see him clearly with that wounds, until I touch him and feel him and put my finger into his wounds, I won't believe. Hence, Jesus had to appear to Thomas in this body. Why? You see, dear, dear brethren, because these were 12 apostles. These were not ordinary disciples. These were the apostles. And what was the role of the apostle? What was the responsibility given to the apostles? You see, they had to be witness about the death and the resurrection of Jesus unto the end of the world. Read Luke 24, 46 to 48. Luke 24, 46 to 48. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Luke 24, 46 to 48? And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and dead the third day, and, the, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witness of these things. You are witness of which things? These things. Which things? About his sufferings about his death and about his resurrection, you are witness of these things and you need to witness the end of this world. Dear brethren, you see, the disciples were the witness of Jesus' resurrection. And also, what is the condition of one to be apostle? Let us read Acts first chapter, verse 21 and 22. Uh, Romy sister, please read sister, Acts first chapter, 21 and 22. <clears throat> wherefore wherefore of these men which have um, accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in hand out among us underline see the condition of an apostle was that here uh, this is speaking of the situation where Judas was supposed to be replaced by other person. So the disciples did not know what to do. So what they decided was that uh, there is a condition for one to become a apostle. What is the condition? They had to be with Jesus for three and a half years. In and out, they need to know about Jesus. Next to sister, verse 22, sister. Beginning from the bap baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us hmm. must one be ordained to be a witness with us of this resurrection, of ah. his resurrection. 
sister, very clear. So, beginning from the baptism of John the Baptist to his resurrection is three and a half years. So, they have to be witness of what? Sufferings of Christ, resurrection of Christ. If they are not witnesses, how can they become apostles? So, if Thomas himself is having a doubt about Jesus' resurrection, how can he be apostles? How can he go and witness everybody? Hence, to strengthen the faith of her, Thomas, Jesus had to come in this uh, body, but it was not the same body. How is this possible? Well, how is this possible? Well, it is not the same body, but it is the body. How is it? Yes, there is a difference. You see, let us read these two verses again. We just have read John chapter 20. Let us read that verse again. John chapter 20, verse 19. Joel brother, read verse 19 and uh, verse 26. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Ah, you see, sister? Huh? Brother, you see, what does he say? The doors were closed, so Jesus came with himself. Correct, no? Read verse 26 also. Everybody, please concentrate. This is a very, very important point. Verse 26. Huh? And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Now, I'll ask a question to everybody. If the door is shut, how can somebody come inside? Can somebody come inside if the door is shut? Tell me. No, no brother. No. But Jesus came. No. How is this possible? And immediately Jesus stood in between them and said, the first word he used was, peace be unto you. Why did Jesus use his words? Because it was highly impossible for somebody to come and the door is closed. Okay? If somebody came and stood in between them, everybody got frightened. How is this possible? You see, hence Jesus told, don't, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Peace be unto you. It is me. Now, how was this possible? This was only possible because Jesus was resurrected as a spirit being. Now, what does it mean by spirit being? Jesus was resurrected in the angelic nature. You see, can the angel manifest in flesh? And uh, whenever they don't want, they can return back in the flesh. Is it possible for an angel to come and go in the flesh? Tell me. Yes. Yes. Joel brother, Muna sister, is it possible for an angel to come in the flesh and return back in the spirit being? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Yes, very good, very good. I appreciate your answers. See, that example, we have a lot of it in the Bible. Three angels, you remember, they came and visited Abraham's house. They later went on to Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed it. How did they come? They came in the flesh. You see, the same angel appeared to Hagar. You see, they came in the flesh. The same angel came in the flesh and fought with Jacob the entire night. Samson's mother and father, they witnessed an angel sitting in the altar. You see, the beautiful example of everybody, which above all is the first world. That is the subject of the first world, three world. Angels came and have relationship with human beings. You see, and uh, Daniel's prayer was answered by Gabriel. You see, angel appeared to mother Mary also. So all this clip proves that angels can assume body and whenever they don't want they can return back to the spiritual body. This is what Jesus did. Dear brethren, when Jesus was resurrected, he was resurrected as a spirit being and he was in the earth atmosphere for 40 days. He was in an angelic spiritual body in which he appeared 11 times to the disciples. I'll give a beautiful example for this one. See, let us see the first time Jesus was resurrected. John chapter 20. Okay. John chapter 20. Uh, Jesus appeared to Mary. 
Uh, let us read from verse uh, 13. Uh, Muna, sister, please read from verse 13, one by one. Let us see income. And they say, they say unto her, Woman, why who pays thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, he turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. I don't know, wait, sister. What happened, sister? Yeah. Jesus is speaking to Mary. Jesus is asking Mary, why, what happened? Why are you crying? Jesus uh, is asking the question to Mary and Mary sincerely, she said, Oh, I don't know. Somebody has taken my master's body. Please tell me who has taken the master's body. I will take it. You see? And she began to weep. And she turned and saw. Huh? You see? Who was there? It seems. Huh? It was Jesus. But Mary could not identify Jesus. Why? You know, if Jesus had come like Jesus, Mary would have identified. But here, Jesus appeared in a different nature. That means in a different form. He did not look like the Jesus who actually was with them. He appeared in a different manner. Now, how was Jesus? You see, in what way did Jesus appear to Mary? Read verse 15, sisters. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou, whom seeketh thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, Arana. said unto her. What sister? She supposed Gardiner. him to be a gardener. Gardener are they? Then what did Jesus come like? Jesus came like a gardener. He would have put on this one, taken on sickle, all the equipments of a gardener. You see, put such type of clothes, huh? as if doing farming in the garden. Huh? So she thought he is like a gardener. Uh -huh. So by the looks of Jesus, she could not identify that it was Jesus. So Jesus appeared in a different form, dear brethren. Please understand this one. You see, and how did Mary identify Jesus? Continue, sister. Huh? Said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, who is, is to say master? See, all this conversation, she did not identify that it is Jesus. But once Jesus called her by her name, Mary, immediately she identified that this is Jesus. Now, how did she identify by Jesus calling Mary? How is it possible? Can anybody guess what, what actually happened? Anybody? Romy sister? Or Buna uh, sister? Joel brother? Any guess? Maybe sock? Sound. Sound. Oh. He heard. Uh, the tone. You see, see, everybody has got tone, no? Huh? Everybody got a style to speak. Huh? You see? So, the so same way Jesus used to call Mary in a particular tone. Mary. You see? See, how do you call Lulia? In the house, there's a particular tone. Everybody, he has got each and every one a style. If Papa calls, Papa will call Lulia in a different tone. If Gopal calls, Gopal brother will call in a different tone. So, Lulia will identify Oh, this is Brother Gopal, this is a Papa, this is Mummy, this is, a, you see, Grandma. Same way, Jesus had a style. Huh? Jesus got a style. Huh? Yes, Amitabh Bhajan has got style. Huh? Shah has got style means, Jackie Chan has got a style means, uh, why doesn't our Lord has got a style? Yes, he has got a particular tone, particular way to speak, particular style. In this way only, she identified this is the master. You see, it was not by the looks because Jesus did not come like Jesus. Jesus did not come with the same body with the wounds. 
Dear brethren, how was this possible? This is possible only if Jesus is resurrected as a spirit being. He could assume different, different bodies. Hence, uh, here, there was nothing to prove to Mary. So Jesus appeared as a gardener and he proved to her that Jesus is no more in that body. That Jesus is resurrected in the spiritual body. Hence, what happened? What did Mary do? Verse 17, uh, uh, Munasita, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. See, what did Jesus say? Touch me not. Jesus is dead for three days. If she is resurrected, if somebody comes and touches him, he will tell, touch me not. Actually, that is, touch me not is a wrong translation. It is actually cling not to me. Imagine if a person whom you love very much is dead. You see, immediately if he comes back to life, what you will do? I'll keep on looking at him. Immediately go and hug him. No? Tightly. You won't leave him at all. That is what Mary did. You see, she hugged Jesus and uh, hold him tightly because she feared if he again is going to disappear. That is the reason he held, she held on to him. Jesus said, don't worry. I will still be here only. I am not an ascended to my God. You see, clearly underline this verse. Each and every word in the Bible has got meaning. I am not an ascended to God. I am not an ascended to heaven. I will still be in the atmosphere. Okay? I am not had gone to my God, your God, my father, your God. But I will again appear to the disciples. Go and tell this one to the disciples that I will again appear to them. Dear brethren, this clearly proves that Jesus appeared as a spirit being. And then, so what you see, uh, verse 19. Muna sister, please read verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. You see? Immediately Jesus uh, stood in between them. How? When the door was closed. How could somebody come when the door was closed? He could come only if he's an angel. You see, only if he's having a spiritual body. So Jesus was resurrected in the spiritual body and in the spiritual body, as how the angels used to come now. You see, they came to uh, Daniel. Daniel, uh, everything was locked. He was praying. You see, Suddenly, the angel came. Gabriel appeared to Mary. How? She opened the door widely. Everything was closed. They came and appeared to them. See, this is a clear proof that Jesus is no more in the flesh. Let us read one more example. There's, this is very beautifully given in Luke 24 chapter. Okay? Joel, brother, please read all the verses. Luke 24 chapter. Everybody, please concentrate. Romanister, Amar, brother, please concentrate. Okay? Luke 24 chapter, brother. Here, you please read the situation and incidents in the house, okay? Because we are short of time. Uh, we can't read the entire verses. Here, what happened was that after the resurrection of Jesus, two of the disciples will be walking to Emmaus. Then suddenly, Jesus joins them. But here, Jesus did not come like Jesus. And he joins them and he has conversation with them. Let us read. Luke 24, 15, brother. And it came to pass that while they communed together, communed together and reason, Jesus himself draw near and wait, went with them. Continue. But their eyes were hold on that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are shed? Okay, thank shed. you. Okay, brother, okay. So you see, Jesus joined them. You see, they could not identify Jesus. You see, but they could not identify even with his words also. You see, Jesus began to question them. What is this you're discussing? As if Jesus did not know anything. You see, 
and disciples who openly told sir we trusted in uh, jesus of nazareth that he will deliver israel but see today he is dead and is gone we are all sad then what happened jesus began to explain to them about himself from the bible read verse 25 and 26 brother out not christ not have suffer these things and to enter into his glory and the beginning at moses and all the prophet he expounded unto them in all scripture the things concer concerning himself concerning himself huh? then what happened is himself verse 27 brother oh, finished not first 27 finished okay now read uh, the place was uh, near so what happened uh, uh, jesus uh, pretended that he was supposed to go somewhere else then what happened you see the disciples compelled him to come to the hotel and have some dinner and stay the night with them read verse 28 and uh, um, 29 30 brother ha huh. read till verse 30 okay and they drew night unto them unto the unto the village whither they went and he made as the two he would have gone further but they constrained him saying abide with us for it it is toward evening and the days is far spent and he went into tarry with them the uh, evening meal so he went with them to tarry with to stay with them so we all know the custom of israel they all sat for dinner you see somebody has to pray and among the three jesus was the eldest person so they offered jesus to pray now what happened was 30 and was 31 ha huh. and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight um, you see they all sat for meat and jesus took the bread and prayed and broke the bread so immediately the disciples identified that this is our master what happened you see and jesus immediately vanished it seems how can somebody vanish if there is in flesh you see so jesus was a spirit being and he vanished and here how did they identify jesus was it by looks was it by speech no it is the way jesus prayed and broke the bread style the actions this way jesus made himself revealed to the disciples that he was no more in the flesh given so this is very clear proof you see jesus here did not come as jesus if they had come as jesus uh, disciples would have reacted in a different way okay let us read one more example in john 21st chapter okay romister kindly open a bible and make sure to read all the verses which i tell you john 21st chapter read the narrations in house okay and it's a beautiful story but here we are going to see only few verses so what happened jesus was dead and uh, you see he was resurrected there was no sign that uh, the kingdom will be established in israel suddenly all the disciples were in the beach wondering what to do you see because they all thought uh, that jesus was the one who was going to establish a kingdom in israel they thought that they were going to sit on the left hand and the right hand as ministers and they can earn a lot so hence they decided to leave everything and follow jesus but now everything was gone so did not know what to do hence they all decided to go back to their original business what was their original business fishing so there what happened that everybody went to fishing then let us read what happened john chapter 21 verse 3 and 4 sister john 21 verse 3 and 4 sister Simon Peter said unto them I go I go a fishing they say unto him 
We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And um, that night they catch nothing. But verse 4, but when the morning was now, came Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciple knew not that it was Jesus. Ah, you see, so they went fishing, entire night they did not get anything. So Jesus, what is he doing? He is sitting at the shore and seeing what the disciples are doing. But here again, they could not identify Jesus because Jesus did not appear like Jesus. Okay. Now verse 5 and uh, 6. Uh, Romister, please. Yes, brother. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. You see, Jesus said, Did you get any fish? They said, No, sir, we have not got any fish. Jesus told, Put the net this side. Immediately, a lot of fishes uh, were caught in the net. You see, do you remember any such uh, incident that uh, Jesus did like this before? Has Jesus done the same thing any time before? Yes. Yes. Uh, now read verse 7, sister. Same way, disciples also remembered. Uh. Therefore, that disciple... Whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now when mm. now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he he creaked his father's foot unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself onto the sea. Uh -huh. You see, immediately uh, the disciple of Jesus loved John is saying to Peter, hey, this is our master man. The Lord Jesus has come there. What did Peter do? He immediately dived into the sea. Why? He was a culprit who took everybody to fishing. What did Jesus say? Wait until I anoint you with the Holy Spirit. Stay in Jerusalem. But these are very fast. You see, fast to react. Immediately he went and uh, gone to fishing. Now, Everybody knew that this is the master. They brought all the fishes to the you see, seashore. And Jesus had already prepared dinner for them. You see? Uh, read verse 12. Jesus said unto them, Come and die. And none of the disciple uh, Dirk yes. asked mm. ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. You see? Everybody knew that this is Lord. If they speak anything, you will take nice class. So they kept quietly. Whatever Jesus gave, they all ate. Now what is this one? Verse 14. Read verse 14, sister. Uh, this is now the third time that Jesus uh, sold himself to his disciples. Read. Disciples. Okay. Uh, brother, do you want me to read again? Yes, please. <clears throat> this is now Third times that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Ah, this is the third time 
all the three times how did Jesus appear like Jesus? Uh, different, different forms with him. This is a clear proof that Jesus was resurrected as a spirit being. And why did Jesus come like uh, Jesus for Thomas? It is only to strengthen his faith. You see, because Thomas was full of doubt. He is called as a doubting Thomas. If he had doubt, how would he come to India and convert, uh, you see, to Christianity? And how would he come and preach the word of God if he had doubt? That is the reason to strengthen his faith. Actually, Jesus, you see, came in the same type of body, not the same body. Please underline, there's a difference. Same type of body. Now, okay, did uh, Thomas touch his wound? Read the verse. You see, did Thomas touch his wound? No, Thomas never touched his wound. Read John chapter 20. Verse 27 and 28. Uh, Gopal Bhattar, can you read? John 20, 27 and 28. <clears throat> then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach thither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. That itself was sufficient. When Jesus told, reach your finger, that itself was sufficient for Thomas, that Jesus was resurrected. No need to go and touch and all this. These are all pictures they put on the internet. He never touched his wound. Anyway, dear brethren, this is a clear proof that Jesus is not resurrected in a fleshly body. He is resurrected in a spiritual body. Everybody think that, uh, you see, uh, a resurrection will happen in the flesh. That is for the world resurrection, not for the heavenly resurrection. Those who are going for the heavenly class, the spiritual class, the heavenly salvation, they will never be resurrected in the fleshly body. But they will be resurrected in the heavenly body, spiritual body. You see, that's a weird uh, misunderstanding with the uh, false understanding of the scriptures. If that is the case, dear brethren, so many people have died in various, various ways. Do you think that Jesus is still having the wounds in heaven? Will like this only full head, uh, full of uh, wounds, uh, hand uh, and uh, feet and all full of wounds. Yes, Stephen, his body will be full of uh, different, different, uh, you see, stone uh, marks. And Peter, you see, he was crucified upside down. He also will be having wound marks. And Paul, his head was beheaded. You see, do you think that the Apostle Paul head will be having stitches here? No. You see, that's not the way. See, God is going to give them a new spiritual body. Why? Because in this flesh, we can't go to heaven. Let us read 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Muna sister, please read 1 Corinthians 15, 50. <clears throat> now his I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot uh, inherit the kingdom of God, neither do corruption inherit in corruption. See, in this flesh and blood, we can't go to heaven. Yeah? We can go to space only in the rocket. We can go to sky in the plane, but not to heaven. You see, dear brethren, the limitations for this human body. If we need to go to heaven, we need a spiritual body. So uh, this body, we need to leave it here only. Okay. If Jesus uh, was not rejected in a fleshly body, then what happened to his body? His body at least should be in the grave, no? But that body was not there. What happened to the body? Read Acts 2.27. Muna sister, please read Acts 2.27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. You see, Jesus' body did not see corruption like our body. See, our body is to die. Within three days, it will get stinking. You see, but Jesus' body was not like that. He was a perfect man, sinless man. His body never corrupted. Then what happened to the body? Why was it not in the grave? You see, God knew that uh, if Jesus' body was left there, people will do idol worship. Now, if you go to Jerusalem, every place where Jesus walked is completely churches. Temples are built there. You see, even it is a very uh, religious place, orthodox place, uh, which is forbidden in the Bible, God clearly said that you should not do idol worship. Even in Goa, if you come, you see, there is a dead body. You see, of Saint Xavier, 
who is the hands, uh, with the fingers, the nails, the hair should all fresh. It. He has died many thousands of years before, you see, but it's still it's fresh. Yeah. Many people, they think, oh, this is the thing, this is God. This is the pakka deception of the devil. You see, the devil wants to divert us from the real God to false God, false truth. Hence, he is preserved on body. You see, this is what they wanted to do with the body of Moses. What happened to the body of Moses? Who buried it? God sent a Mikhail to bury it. We don't know where it is buried because the body of Moses was left there. You see, what happened? Then only they would have built Mecca and Medina. Satan has beautiful thoughts to worship dead body as they are doing it now. No? The Islam brothers are doing no. They worship the dead body. Then they would have done in Moses days itself. If Jesus' body was there, they would have done much more grander. God did not want it. They have then, okay, therefore his body is not there, but his body is preserved somewhere by God. We don't know. But definitely, God will let us know in the thousand years where and what happened to the perfect man, Jesus' body. Dear brethren, this is all a clear proof that Jesus is no more in the flesh. You see, and the preserving of the body is not at all necessary. In all these things, Jesus clearly proved that Jesus is a spiritual body. What did he tell to Nicodemus? Read John 3 8. John 3 8. Joel, brother, please read John 3 8. The wind bloweth, where is it licit? And thou hearest the sound, therefore, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. See, this is what Jesus proved. Everyone who is born of the Spirit, or born in the spiritual nature, born in the spirit being, a spiritual body, they shall be like wind. They can't be seen. They can't be heard. You see, they can only come and go. It will be like the wind, invisible. This is what Jesus proved. Dear brethren, hence Jesus appeared in this nature, the bright divine nature, last time to apostle. You see, Paul. What happened to his eyes? His eyes were blinded. So Jesus is no more in the flesh body. And imagine, if Jesus is going to come in the same spiritual body, what will happen to the whole world? You see, if the whole world will see Jesus in the spiritual body, what will happen? Their eyes will be blinded. Isn't it? Their eyes will be blinded now. Apostle Paul's eyes was blinded. Then what will happen to the whole world? Will they be blinded? What will happen? Then how Jesus will come, we will see next week. Okay? So thank you, dear brethren. Any doubts, any questions anybody is having? You can ask. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? Joel, brother? Any doubts? No, brother. Muna, sister? No, brother. Okay, Romy, sister, Amar, brother? No questions, brother. No questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Please go through the notes I'll be sending. Okay. And uh, recording. Okay. Uh, please. I, I, I'm seeing that nobody is seeing the recording. Okay. Please see the recording. It's very important you listen again again at least one or two times. If you have doubts, you please clarify. Because next coming classes are very, very important and much deeper than this one. So... Any doubts, please don't hesitate. We are here to clarify. Of course, you can't explain each and every things intricately, but understand the concept. Understanding the concept is very, very important. Okay? So, Lord bless. Uh, thank you, everybody.